Um, so anyway, yeah, I've just uploaded the video about um, base desires. And bad leaf. We've got dinky and door samba. We need dinky. Um, yeah, well, I mean, put it this way. What I've always been saying about ministry and about stuff like that is God will give you something. And what God will give you is something that is based on a scripture. So, base desires. Base desires is really what the Lord was talking about when he was talking about don't take the thought, you know, as in don't look at your neighbour with lust. Because if you do, you've sinned. you committed adultery. Because he was asked about it. He was asked about, you know, that sort of thing. And he said, look, even if you look at this person with lust, you've already sinned. He's talking about base desires. Now, base desires are different for different people. As I tried to say in that, you've got some people that are susceptible to sexual desires. Some people are susceptible to addiction, drugs. Some people are susceptible to risk, so gambling. Gambling is a risk one. Another risk one is danger. There's a risk there. Some people have a base desire for pain, for receiving pain or for giving pain, causing pain. Yeah. You have men and women, but mainly men, who want to be punished. You know, from dominatrixes and people like that, and that's a base desire. It's not sexual. That desire isn't really sexual. It's a desire to be punished. And pain can be involved in that. But these are base desires that we have. And we just need to be aware of our base desires. So, anyway. That's our message is given. Is that you could be watching the news. Now, the morning of you giving a message to somebody, you could be listening to the radio on the way to the church. Come here. Oi. Amber, come here now. Get here. Amber. Yeah. Typical bloody skater. Oh. All right, so yeah. If you're called to minister at something, God will give you what he wants you to say. But it will be in various ways. It could be something he gives you during the dream the night before. <clears throat> it could be something he's put on your heart a day or two before. It could be something that you saw in a TV program or a YouTube clip or something mentioned on Facebook or something mentioned on Twitter. So it could be a song you listen to on the way in. It could be a worship song or any other type of song on the radio. It could be a bit of news that comes on. But God will speak to you through that and that will be relevant to a scripture. And God will tell you what scripture that's relevant to. He might not tell you until you start speaking. That's the point. You need to trust in God. You need to trust that God's going to give you something to say. Last night, for example, I did the big video last night. It lasted quite a while. Now, the first part of the video was solid enough. It was okay. It wasn't lukewarm. It was... It was just about temperature for hands. Yeah, it was okay. I mean, put it this way. In the winter, it wouldn't burn you, the temperature. In the summer, it probably would. Um, that sort of temperature. Whereas the latter part would have been a damn sight hotter. That was 
on fire. Yeah, that was good. When talking about, you know, what God is going to bring. Even when talking about the fact of, you know, the Christian greats. And the fact that if you just do what God has called you to do, you know, those people will be honoured to shake your hand. That stuff is so true, but it's something that really is not spoken about that much. It should be. You see, that is encouraging. That is real encouraging. When you talk about the sort of encouraging message that, you know, is usually brought, that's a look warm rubbish. It's not encouraging. But it's encouraging to know that if you just do what God has called you to do, which isn't necessarily going to have to be in line with what Peter did, or Paul did, or what Samuel did, or Solomon, David. It doesn't have to be in line with what they did. But you see, if they obey God, and you obey God, you're in equal standing with them. And they will be honoured to shake your hand because you obey God. And that's the point. When you look, what the most important thing to understand about your walk is that you don't look at them and try and emulate them and try and say, I've got to match up with them. The way you match up with these people is that you just do what God has called you to do. Simple. You don't need to do more than that. You just do what God has called you to do because that's what they did. Yeah, that's what they did. And that's what mattered. They did what God was calling them to do. And that is the most important thing. That's the most important thing they could do. That's the most important thing you can do. Yeah, that's the reality. Yeah, it is. Look at him playing. He's just entertaining himself, isn't he? Look at that. <laughs> you pull one so that it moves. Then you go around to get the other one. You move that one around a bit. They both move. You alright, Riley? How you doing, pup? You want to play? You playing, Smiley, Riley? Riley! Look at him. Oh, he's a boy. He's my boy. You my boy? That's the point. I've not put any of the lights on. Right, come here a sec. Come here. One second. Here you go, sorted. Collar's on now. See, the collar's weren't on. I've forgotten. To, I usually do that when I get them out of the car, but I completely forgot. Oh, well. No worries, it's done now. It doesn't actually seem that cold now. It's The temperature has seemingly warmed up a bit. Why, I do not know. It's quite pretty cloudy. It is quite cloudy, so that may be why. Let's wind it in a tiny bit. There you go. Okay. Well, that's it. All you're called to do, all you're called to do, is do what God's called you to do. That's it. That's it. That's why I've said all the way through, nobody can actually tell you that as a Christian, you have to do A, B, C, D, and F. Because if God is telling you to do that, then do it. But no human being has the authority to tell you you've got to do this, that, and the other. Because really, you don't. You don't. Yeah, I mean, people, teachers, pastors, ministers, they do have the authority to tell you that behaving in a certain manner is not good for you and is not things that you should be doing. 
that it's bad that sort of stuff but you know should they be telling you that you've got to be speaking in tongues no nope. should they be telling you you've got to prophesy no nope. should they be telling you you've got to go out and pray for the sick no nope. they shouldn't should they be telling you you've got to go out and evangelize door to door that sort of stuff no they shouldn't that's up to god to tell you that if god is telling you to do that you go and do it should they say to you you should be evangelizing in the way that god is telling you to do so yeah <laughs> yeah because we're all called to evangelize but we're not necessarily called to be an evangelist only evangelists are called to be an evangelist but it doesn't mean we're not called to evangelize because we all are we're all called to access the ministry of healing it doesn't mean we're called into the ministry of healing because we're not not all of us some of us are and there are different areas of healing again this is something which has not really been taught the physical has been taught the spiritual has sort of been taught but the mental and emotional is really being ignored you know, there's not really been much teaching in the church about the connection between the mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. And if even one of those areas is off, it can affect all the rest. Which is why if you're called into the ministry of healing, you've got to be prepared to go into any of those areas. And that's why you've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit knows exactly what's wrong. And what needs to be done to fix it? See, in the end, we don't know that. And we can't tell that by looking at people. We can't even tell that by asking people. You ask the person who comes to you for healing what needs to be done, they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue. Even a doctor, even like a GP or an actual doctor who's qualified in the area where they need help in, can't tell you what they need to do to have it fixed by God. Because they have no idea. The only one that knows is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is connected to God. The Holy Spirit is God. So therefore God is leading you as to how to deal with that issue. That's why one of the things that has been the, the issue to be pushed for the past year has been be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Look at my videos over the past year. The majority of them have been talking about that. Be led, be guided by the Holy Spirit. They've been the push. Well, because without that, it's not a case where without being led by the Holy Spirit, you're going to find it difficult to be right with God, you can't be right with God. You can't. Unless you're being led and guided by the Holy Spirit, unless you're walking according to that leading, that guiding, you can't be right with God. You can't. It's not a possibility, it just isn't possible that you can do that. So it's all very well to say, I mean, yeah, some of my earlier videos may have suggested because I wasn't only on too heavy at that point in time. So they may have suggested that it would be helpful to you if you were being led and guided by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is known as the helper. But 
the thing of it is sometimes the helper is essential and in areas of your walk with God the helper is essential it's not in any way shape or form you know suggested it's absolutely and totally essential it's as essential as air and water is to our bodies nobody says that air and water would be helpful to us we know that those things are essential and food now there are certain types of food that are helpful because they're nice you know sugary stuff can be helpful carbs can be helpful protein can be helpful if you get it all in the right sort of amount then your body can thrive because you've got a good diet so having a good diet can be helpful not essential but helpful <sighs> see no wind normally here it's quite windy well here and up there just a bit further up it's usually just past this area it's very very windy um tonight i can't sense any wind so it's not too bad i'm going to, have to do a video at some point um oh, i can't remember what the thing is called? Um, oh, if you, if you nick that off Amber. Did you lose your thingy, Amber? Did Lucy nick it? Poor Amber. Poor de Bamba. Did you lose it, Amber? Oh, the poor de Bamba. Oh, the poor de Bamba. Now, where's the Molly? Molly's over there. Okay, I see the Molly. I see you, Molly. I see you, Molly. Call you up, right, bub. Good girl. Oh, there's something called his Summit Kingdom. Which was quite cool because there was one bit it where they talk about uh, dust. And in one universe, dust is counted as good. One is counted as bad. One is counted as basically the universe. You know, the stuff in the universe. So like in our universe, it'd be counted as the stuff in the universe. The universe is made of. Now, this lady from our universe goes into the other universes where there's these um, things that attack adults. And basically, they don't kill adults, they basically take life away. Now, that would usually suggest kill. It is sort of kill. It's making them into zombies, basically. Um, not zombies that go and eat people, just, you know, like vegetative states of humans. They're sort of walking around, but they, their brain isn't there anymore, and their mind isn't there anymore, and they think these things, like, um, they come and take all of that. Um, anyway, so this lady from this kingdom, she's told by the dust that she'll be protected when she goes into that one. And she is. None of these, she's an adult, and normally in this kingdom, there's only ever children, so the children are coming up to her going, excuse me, how on earth are you still here? You're an adult. How comes they haven't come and got you? When well, you see, she's actually being protected from this thing. So she's walking in this kingdom, being protected. So the nastinesses of that kingdom won't touch her. And that's pretty cool. Now, the reason why I mention that is because last night, or might be last night or a few nights ago I was talking about the fact that if you're led by the Holy Spirit you can be in a situation where the Holy Spirit will guide you away from danger so you are therefore sort of in this kingdom but protected which is cool Oh, yeah. 
Well, I say that that's a lovely thing. Think of in that sense. Yeah, that's the point. You're in this kingdom and not of it, so therefore there are therefore dangers of this kingdom that could affect you. And if the devil wants to have a go at you, he will use whatever these dangers are to try and get in your way to try and stop you. So of course the Holy Spirit wants to prevent that from happening. And this is the point, the devil has no chance against God. Yeah, the way God showed it to me is that life is like a game of chess. You know, chess is a tricky game. Um, there are parts that move in different directions. And we are playing against the devil. The devil has had thousands of years experience in playing this game. He's an expert at it. Absolute expert at it. He is very, very good at playing this game. He gets people and knackers them. Right? So, devil's an expert, we're not. We're, we are mere novices at best. At absolute best. Even the best chess players in the world are nothing whatsoever in comparison to the devil with regards to ability of playing chess. Now, I've got a clue. Not a Scooby. Not a Scooby, Wooby, 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 Dooby. But you see, God created the game. So God knows the game far better than the devil. He created it. So nobody can beat God at that game. That's the reality. And so with that being the case, if you have God leading and guiding you, and you trust God to lead and guide you, and you walk according to God leading and guiding you, you'll win. Well, you won't win. God will win through you. Yeah, let the expert, let, let the one who knows the game, knows how to play the game, made the game up to start with, let him guide you and protect you. And he will do so. If you're led and guided by the Holy Spirit, then and you take notice of that, you live according to that, then nothing can touch you unless God wants it to touch you. Simple. Nothing can touch you unless God wants it to touch you. Simple as that. Well, you have to understand, if the Lord is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then there is no one above him at all. There is no human being at all above him. None. So when it says every knee, every knee will bow down, it means every knee will bow down. Now, some will bow down earlier. Some will be forced to. Certainly anyone who decides they want to try and harass you, if you're being led and guided by the Holy Spirit, then God will get them out of the way. Gently or harshly. Gently is probably God's preferred option. But... It really is the case that they have a choice whether <laughs> it's going to be gently or harshly. And some people are too silly to take gently. They would prefer the harshly method to try and test that. And they will regret it. They will probably only do the harshly once and they won't do it again. But that's why it's about trusting God. Let God be the one. As I said the other night, 
Yeah, when people try to push you. As much as you can. Walk away. Leave it. Don't respond. You don't need to. You let God respond. Simple. Let God respond his way. Let him decide what needs to be done about the situation, if anything at all. That's the point. Who is it about? It's about him. Bring it. Do we hear? There you go, Molly Collie. <laughs> there you go, good Molly Collie. There you go. See, it's not too windy, is it? At all. Here tonight, there's, there's no wind. Trees are basically just there, standing still. There's no blowing around or anything like that. Tonight? No. The river seems to be running quite well, so. <laughs> there's probably been a fair bit of rain. If there's been snow in the mountains and the snow melts a bit, then of course that creates a lot more water. So, hi. Water's still flowing pretty well. Hi. I almost found something else to play with. Good. That's what they were playing with the other night. Good. Okay. She's happy. As long as she's happy, that's what matters, really. Indeed. <laughs> now, two good walks earlier. It did indeed, yes. Took him out for whack a ball um, with a tennis racket. And then um, about an hour or so later, took him out again to the Spiny Palace for a little kick around with the ball. There. And then I fed them afterwards. Because um, normally I feed them after one walk, but I thought, no, today give them two walks. And so that way, they slept quite well after that because they'd had two very good walks. And they were a bit knackered. So that's good. Fine. They had good food as well. And then after their food, they had the rest of the... Because um, I had a good feed as well. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> I the equivalent to the Christmas meal again with the roast potatoes and the Yorkshire puddings. I I don't know a packet of twelve Yorkshire puddings, so I had I think four myself and I gave the rest to the dogs. They had the rest. So yeah, that's cool. So yeah, that was nice. Very nice indeed. So I had uh ribeye steak with roast potatoes. Yorkshire puddings and peas and gravy and that was nice big plateful so yeah and normally I'd have had something else later on didn't have anything else later on nope wasn't hungry at all that was a good meal <laughs> that was a very good meal yeah so yeah so hi that was good I've still got more rice potatoes loads of them so that's cool. So I can have them still with other stuff. I will. I've got sausages and stuff like that. So I will take advantage of that. What the heck is all this down here? No idea at all. Weird stuff. Okay. Yep. Indeed. Oh, there you go. There's a car just shitting you. Yeah. Poor Kaka. <laughs> well, the other one should get repaired uh, in the next couple of days, actually. Got to get money at the bank to pay for that repair job. Um, but that means that I'll have this car for the doggies and then I'll have the other car for me to just drive around to the shops and uh, anywhere where I've got to go. So that's good. All right, leave. Yeah. So yeah, tomorrow I'm meeting up with Stuart again, so 
We'll see what the conversation will be then. I sent the last night's video to him. So hopefully he enjoys that. Hi. Yeah. Well, the same things like videos. It really is a case now of, yeah, for me, trying to focus on just what God wants me to say. But and sometimes what God wants you to say will last quite a while. Or ideally speaking, what it would be is. If God gives you something and that lasts for 10 minutes, after that 10 minutes, you sit down, have a bit of praise and worship, or have a call for prayer, whatever, and then, and then after that, if God gives you something more, you stand up again, you go and give that. Yeah, and then once that's been given, you sit down again and they do something else, a bit more prayer or a bit more praise and worship. Yeah? That's the idea. That's the idea. Give what God has given you to give. Now, it may be possible that uh, on a given Sunday or whatever day you're called to minister, you may be given two lots or three lots of ten minute talks by God the next one you might be given 20 minutes one lot of 20 minutes that's it next time you might not be given anything at all so you just have a whole service where it's just worship or a whole service where it's just prayer or a whole service where you invite people for prayer yeah the most important thing is you do what God wants you to do. Simple as that. What does God want you to do? Do that. Because that's what matters. What does God want you to do? See, the point of it is, we've got to stop caring about what the people want. We've got to stop caring about what the people want because we're not supposed to be people pleasers. We're supposed to be a God pleaser. Now, that's the one thing about me, you see. I've got people around me who don't seem to like me. Guess what? Don't care. <laughs> don't care. Could not care less. Could not care less. They, they've got nothing to offer me at all. In a form of friendship or anything like that, they've got nothing. Yeah? I don't want to play their stupid games. I had a friend, Colin, who was a gossip. And, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, that's, that's gone now. Good. Good. Because that sort of stuff is not good to have. So, you yeah. know, I'm not living next door to or above or below anyone who's a spiritual born-again Christian. So there's nothing to miss in any relationship with these people in any way, shape or form. So, you know, don't care. I'm not into people pleasing at all. You know, when I go on to a forum, I went on to, I was watching earlier, I think I mentioned it in one of the videos earlier, um, an old church, they had an online service and this online service was poor really poor the bloke had written down something and what he's written down was basically the same thing that they give every single year on the lead up to christmas same message about the birth of christ leading to easter etc etc right all that sort of stuff but it was all religious nonsense basically i mean it's it's right it's correct it's correct as in it's biblical but it's not going to set anyone's life on fire. And so I said that. I said, excuse me, who taught this person? 
some Bible college, I had to take out the word demonic because I put in demonic. And I thought, well, maybe that's been a bit too harsh. I mean, it's true, but <laughs> as I said yesterday about shining in the night, shining in the light can be offensive. So maybe don't shine too much light because that's even more offensive. So, <laughs> sometimes temper it a little bit, you know? And so, yeah, it was poor to say the least. Really, really poor. The offerings that they, that they provided was incredibly poor. And, yeah, I mean, a friend of mine, Robin Williamson, um, he may even have seen my comments because that's the church that he used to minister at. He was a pastor there. And, yeah, he watches some of the online ministry so maybe he was watching it maybe he saw my comments yeah <laughs> no, I don't think he got back to me on it so that's cool yeah <laughs> but yeah that's the thing churchy we've got to stop being churchy you know churchy is an offensive thing it's not a good thing it's an offensive thing it's offensive to God it really is. I mean, come on. It's really offensive. Because churchy is that comfortable, encouraging sort of church where no one's held accountable and it's it's just nice. It's nothing really. It's just, you know, you go to church. It's full of churchgoers. You know, you don't really have any sort of spiritual anything. Wait, leave that. What did I say earlier? And you remember, walk away. You're back where you were earlier, aren't you? Chewy, walk away. I don't know what it is, but leave it. Goodness knows what it was. Frozen, whatever it was. <laughs> Get in, Chewy. Get the bottom. That's one Lucy left earlier. Okay. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's getting cold again. Just had the right hand out holding the uh, camera for a while and that, that got cold I do have a headset so I can do videos um, like a GoPro but not a GoPro um, I've not used it for a long time and the headset bit I think is a bit broken certainly haven't used that for a long time and so that I could charge it I could try and use it I need to. I mean, what would be useful would be having something where I can clip it to a jacket and just walk around so my hands can be in my pockets. Yeah, that would be quite useful. Because if it's actually on my jacket, then it means that there'd be no need whatsoever for me to hold it in any position. So, certainly in the winter, hands can stay in pockets. Where well, it could be nice and stuggly warm one. Yes. I mean, now I don't smoke. I can even wear gloves when I go out. You know, but not when I'm holding phone. Because, you know, gloves are a bit big. So I'm going to have to have a look online. See what there is. Have a look on YouTube. See what there is for, um, yeah, that sort of thing. Little GoPro sort of things. GoPro bits that can be clipped onto jackets and use that. Although, again, I'll have to test it because I'm not sure what the audio is like. And the problem with a lot of these GoPro things is that, uh, what's it called? Um, what is it? They give the, with the view they give, I don't like that view. It's more of a fish eye sort of view. Which I don't like. Yeah, I don't like any of those sort of views at all. Yeah, the panoramic sort of view. Don't like it. This is the sort of view I like. It, it's simple, it's nice, it's a normal video. That, that works for me. Yeah. Easier to edit, that sort of stuff. So that's perfect. So I'll have a look. I might even get a GoPro or something like that. They are more expensive, but I can... I'll have a look. I'll have a look. It certainly would be a practical thing to do. 
Yeah, but as I say, I'll have to find something that can be clipped onto your jacket. I mean, the, I've, the one I've got, I could probably see if I can get something for that to clip onto a jacket. Yeah. Yeah, time will tell. Do a bit of homework. Next couple of days, I think that'd be good. Well, because that's another thing. If I can have something clip me jacket, I can blow my nose when I'm walking around rather than the sniffle, sniffle, sniffle. But of course, when I'm holding the phone, I need one hand to hold the phone. I can't exactly blow my nose. So, not exactly practical, you know, having to hold the phone. But there you go. I think that bit of water there is now frozen. By the looks of it, yeah. Amber was just trying to get a drink and she was walking on it. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice story for them, isn't it, really? Hi. But it is winter. I'm not really sure if it's ice lily weather, really. No, no idea. Money got bop bop. And money still got bop bop. Okay, money. Money, money got bop bop. Right. One second. There you go, I just blew my nose. I thought, oh, I'll sod it. Pause the video for a second, blow nose. Do all that, yeah. Be able to breathe a bit clearer. There you go. Oh, they oh she just broke through the ice here. Did you break through the ice, Amber? <laughs> did you break through the ice, Baba? You did. You broke through the icicles. Did you? Is that good? Is that better, Amber? Yeah. You see the towel wag? Why is that, Amber? So good. Towel waggy. It's towel waggy. Oh, towel waggy. Come on. This way. Come on. There you go. Towel was wagging. Another reason to pause the video is because the video wasn't going anywhere. So I figured, well, let's speak to God a second and find out if there's anything else that needs to be spoken about. Well, there was one thing that... Uh, God spoke to me about earlier was to talk about you are who you are for a reason because this is the thing that's quite often we don't know why we are who we are necessarily because uh, some people are very bubbly some people are very serious um, and some people that are very serious would rather be a bit more bubbly but they're not because their personality is what it is and quite often we don't know why we are the way we are. But, as I said yesterday, once we've finished the job that God has for us, we will understand a lot more about even why we are who we are. Because we need to be who we are to do that. You know, in many cases, that is exactly the case. You need to be exactly who you are to do what God wants you to do. You've been moulded by God to do that. Now, that isn't the case for everyone. No. With some people, it's their generic. You know, they're who they are, that's it. But some people are who they are for a specific reason. Um, there is a very precise reason why they are who they are. Um, now, you have to assume that you might be one of those people. You might not be, but you have to assume you might be one of those people. That you are who you are for a reason. That you've been moulded by God for a particular purpose. Yeah, because... You have to have the personality you have. And your personality is made up. I know for me. I went through what I went through. When I was younger. So now I have. Quite a lot of degrees of compassion for people. Who have gone through stuff. Because I've been through stuff. So I know. I know what it's like to go through. That sort of thing. So. You know, I understand that. I can be empathetic with people about that. So, yeah. I also understand, you know, the dangers 
I'm not dealing with issues. Yeah. God has been speaking to me about that for 20 odd years now. Yeah, he started to speak to me about avoid the crash back in, well, before 2000. I started writing something called Avoid the Crash. At that point in time, it started off talking about the fact that aeroplanes get serviced on a regular basis. Every single part has to be examined because you wouldn't, you wouldn't in any way, shape or form go up in an aeroplane if that hadn't happened, if it hadn't been serviced. If you thought that maybe these bits weren't, weren't looked at on a regular basis to make sure that that plane was safe, you wouldn't go up in one, would you? But how often do we service ourselves? How often do we look deeply into ourselves to see if there are things that could cause us to crash? Well, in truth, we don't. But that's the point. God was speaking to me about that 20 years ago. Now, I'd only just become a Christian. Well, I was relatively young, about what, six years old, five or six years old at the time. I wasn't exactly in churches where people were speaking to me about this stuff. But it is a case that when I was young, even younger, probably about 16, 17, I used to counsel people. You know, I was in care and there were people in care who needed help and they would often come to me for that help. So I was used as a counsellor. I saw people in that sort of circumstances in care doing stuff that was really bad for them, like glue sniffing. Young females getting pregnant at a young age. You know, people getting involved in drugs and other stuff that was bad for them because they hadn't dealt with the issues that they have. So, yeah, I went through that. I saw that stuff as a kid because God wanted me to deal with that stuff when I got older. God wanted me to be speaking to people about that stuff when I got older. So, I had to see that stuff then. And that's the case with many of us. You know, we've, if you've been through stuff, you've been through it for a reason. God, just, God didn't just let you go through it for no reason. There was a reason behind it. And so, yeah. Well, certainly it is a case that if you can come through whatever it is you're going through and if you can get to the point where God can use you as a vessel to minister to people and to glorify his name then what you went through you went through for a reason if however you allow the devil to destroy your life if you're not a devil to use those issues to make you crash and, you know, big explosion, etc., etc., well, then what you've been through, you've sort of been through for nothing. So that's why it's important to deal with this stuff. That's why it's important that we have a church that helps people to deal with this stuff. Yeah, that's why it's vitally important. Get your butt then. Molly, get your butt butt. There you go, bubs. There's a good girl. You got Molly Carly. Love her, love her, love her. Yes, yes, yes. That's it, folks. I mean, yeah, I don't speak about this stuff just for the sake of speaking about it. I don't do videos just for the sake of doing a video. You know, it's blinking cold tonight. Hands are out holding this phone. It matters. 
That's the point, it matters. You know, people are in situations where they're struggling. So it matters, and it matters that we get to church. Riley, move, move, bum. Now, there's glass here, move, bum. Get around the glass, that glass still hasn't been cleaned up. I thought it might have been cleaned up, that glass. Thankfully, it's frozen to the ground right now, but um, it's still there. Council still haven't dealt with it. That's quite disgusting, really. Been there for over a week, that glass. Hello, Riley. Have a lovely How are you doing? Good walkies? Yeah, good girl. And Chewie's gone way ahead. <laughs> it is cold now. Weirdly, it sort of warmed up a bit, then it got cold, then it warmed up a bit, then it got cold, then it warmed up a bit, then it got cold. It may just be the point that as I've been walking around, I've got used to it a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But folks, look, you know, really it is very important that we get the church right. You know, there are, there are people who are teetering on the edge. That's the certainty. There are people that are teetering, teetering on the edge and there are people that are hanging on yeah, for dear life, in trouble. They need us to do what it is God wants us to do, so that they can be delivered and set free and rescued, basically. You know, God has put in us everything needed to do that but we have to be willing and for some that means not just be willing for God to do everything yeah because some have to be the ones who are the forebearers for this That's the reality. Yeah, like most examples of revivals, you have people that are forebearers, people that go out in front and do most of the work. Molly, where's your bot? You had a bottle of your donut. You want Riley's? Right, Riley's now. Molly, get, get Molly. Here you go, Abs. You have it. Then. You want it, you have it. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, as I say, there is potentially for the forebearers, there is hardship because, as I said last night, those who bring light in darkness, certainly the first people to bring light in darkness, they are likely to come under attack. Um, but after that, yeah, the people that come after are going to come under less attack. Um, but if you are one of the forebearers, you're one of the people told by God to go out there, one of the first people, and you come under attack, you may be the people that start to bear fruit. First. And even if you're not, guess what? If you're doing what God has called you to do, and you're being obedient despite the hardship, when you go to heaven, you'll have all those great people of God being honoured to stand by your side. Especially those who, like you, serve God despite the hardship. Like, for example, if you're someone who is 
resistant to serving God, resistant to going where God wants you to go, but you will eventually go. Then you know, Jonah is going to be happy to see you. <laughs> Any? Yeah. Jonah is going to be quite delighted to see you because you know you have something in common. So that's good, isn't it? Really. <laughs> He will, be, he will be able to identify with you and you with him. You just about got that point when in the river, didn't you, Chewie? Eh? Well, the pond. Not the river, the pond. Yes. I reckon that's a bit frozen. I wouldn't want one of those to go in there. Not in any way, shape or form, though. Hello, my girl. Love you. Oh, dear. Now, if one of mine went in there and got in trouble, I'd have to go in after them. And I know that'd be okay. I mean, it's, I don't think it's that deep for me to be in serious trouble, but um, it would be blinking cold. Uh, so I wouldn't fancy it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would be cold indeed. Let's see how the car's getting on. Is that icy again? Ah, uh, starting to get. There you go. Starting to get it. A bit icy. A bit cold. Come on, in you come. Oi, oi, oi. Ready? Come on in. In you go. In you pop. In you pop, sis. Let's do your collar. Smiley Riley, come here. Do you call me? Chewy, up. Shift arse now, move. Get in there. Come here, Chewy. Now, Chewy here. Here now, Nutter. Do your collar. You need to be wiped over before bed. If you want to jump up on my bed, don't you? Hey, hey little monkey. Yes, if you want to jump up on my bed, little monkey. Yes, you do. You should do, Mr. Chu. You should do, Mr. Chu. <laughs> get back. Go on. Shift us. I'm trying to get you on video and your face is right up against the camera. Nutter. Look at you. He's a handsome boy, though, isn't you, Chu? Eh? Big smile on your face. You a happy boy? Is you a happy boy? You is, you're a happy bubba. Good boy. Love you. Right, get in there. Go on. Shift us, Chu. Now. Chewy, move in now. Oh, right, anyway, I have to leave you to it. <laughs> Nutter doesn't simply want to go in there. Got to get Molly in, yeah. So, there you go. But right, you take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.